Here we have a Siemens Seamovert AC drive. And the customer's complaint, or one of their problems, was a DC overvoltage fault. Now this can be somewhat deceptive because in actuality, when this is powered up, what we discovered is that the DC bus, or the side of the drive that is rectified, you have AC power coming in here, and it's rectified to DC, and then inverted back out to AC, which goes to a motor that is variable, meaning the frequency and voltage is variable to adjust speed on a motor. But in this case, the DC voltage was in actuality low. So this is a case where the actual fault codes can be a little deceptive or not intuitive as to what the true problem is. We've already removed all the hardware from this DC bus bank and we'll show you what we are talking about. So we've removed the plate which sits on top like this and revealed the caps underneath. Now when we measured at around 460 volts we should be getting over 500 volts DC. However we had a problem and at 460 volts we were getting about maybe half of what was expected about 250 something like that and then we come to find out when we measure we find that the caps here as you can see there's a fair bit of difference in our readings here and so we know that all these caps being equal there is a problem when we do a resistance reading here so we are going to go ahead and move this to a capacitance reading and we will use our ESR meter and now do a reading on capacitance and see what we get. So right now for that cap, we are getting nothing. On this cap, we are getting nothing. On this cap we are measuring, we got 5,000 microfarads, low ESR, that's actually very good. Now we will use our ESR meter to detect capacitance value that we're measuring as well as the equivalent series resistance of these four caps to see if we can figure out the problem. Here we will go ahead and measure. And immediately with our probes here, we are getting just open circuit, right? We're getting nothing between these two points. Now we move over to the one next to it. Again, open circuit and nothing between those two points. Here we will go ahead and measure between positive and negative. And now it fully charges uh, 5,000 microfarads. That's what we were expecting, low ESRs. So that is actually a good cap. Now again, another open. So we have three open capacitors, one that is charging. That's why we were able to get some DC bus, but uh, altogether low in general. So at this point, we are going to actually replace all four. We definitely don't want to keep that one in there. Even though we think it might be good, it might have gotten damaged along with these other things. And also, it's a standard good practice. Replace caps with good ones. And we'll put that in. We will power up the drive and see if she works. Here we have installed the new capacitors into the capacitor bank, and we are now charging the capacitors to form them. Large electrolytic capacitors, such as the ones we have installed in this capacitor bank, can sometimes degrade. Now the capacitors that we have put in here are brand new, but capacitors that have been in storage for a long time sometimes have problems that form between the metal oxide layers within the cap and they must be reformed. These metal oxide layers need to be reformed with voltage before installing under a load. So here we are using a DC rectifier to put voltage on the whole capacitor bank, which has four total capacitors on it. And we are using this rectifier to go ahead and put a low amount of DC voltage that we will step up to the rated voltage in order to slowly form the caps to make sure they do not have any catastrophic failures while under load. And finally, we will perform full load testing on the drive on our three-tier dynamometer before the unit will ship out. This puts a load on the output and ensures any failure that would happen while in the machine will happen here and not at the customer facility. Thank you for watching. 
for more videos, subscribe to our channel.